Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um. <laughs> welcome everyone. Before we start the program, we're just going to welcome the honorary um, Lord Yasmin Da. She'll be coming in with one of the, the head of trustee for Angels of Hope. <laughs> Leah Chikamba Lando was born and brought up in Zambia. She migrated to the UK in 2003 and has a beautiful family of three children and a loving husband. A loving husband. <laughs> family at the family hub and children's centers across central Manchester. Leah is the founder and CEO of Angels of Hope. We'll hear more about Angels of Hope as we go along for women. And Leah is an early years educator and a psychologist. How many hats? Wow. Her, her passion is seeing women realize their strength and owning their success. So Leah is going to tell us about Angels of Hope and also introduce her trustees. It's an honor and privilege to welcome Sharon uh, to the stage, please. Oh, sorry. It's good to see so many people come to celebrate with us, and you all look stunning. You all look lovely. Thank you. So, Angels of Hope. How did we come up with the name? I knew I wanted something that had maybe hope or angel in it, because as a Christian, I believe that we are here on earth as angels to be angels to other people. I didn't know how to make the word, but my very, very lovely, loving husband actually is the one who put all the words together and came up with the word angels of hope for women. So shall we give him a round of applause? Thank you. It's been 23 years since my parents passed away in Zambia, where I grew up. It was only then I realized the power of community support as the whole community rallied behind us to offer us the invaluable support during that difficult time. In amongst these events, something remarkable was going to happen in the future. Fast forward 2014. In Manchester, I started an organization dedicated to helping women and girls in my community with the help and support of two of my friends, Esnat Bota and Tapiwa Ndovi, who are still with me today as trustees. I didn't know it yet, but by 2024, we would have supported thousands of women to improve their well-being, become empowered to make informed decisions. Over the years, we recruited more trustees who have supported us and are still with us. So we have Moshe, Leti, Saki, and Nazreen. Angels of Hope is an organization that supports female empowerment with the aim to develop the confidence and skills of aspiring women. It has now become one of the leading women's organizations in Manchester. I am pleased to say that over the years we have contributed to a marked improvement in women starting and growing their own businesses and organizations here in Manchester, which has had a positive impact in our community and created employment opportunities. One might ask, what do you treasure most about founding an organization such as this? My favorite thing about finding a purpose-driven organization can only be measured by the impact the organization has had on the lives of women. Hearing the real stories of women whose lives we have changed is what is really important. And therefore, it's about time we as women begin to own our own success and know our strengths. Thank you very much. So at this time, I would like to uh, call forward our trustees, the people who have been with, with myself 
with the Charity Angels of Hope throughout from when we started in 2014 until now. So if I could ask our trustees to please come forward. So we can see their pictures there in the background on the screen. And they can look and see. Saki, where's our pink Saki? Not here yet. Oh. There's Esma Bota. Takiwa. that's happening right in our community. And, and like I said, the, the, the work that I do, I see the need for such organizations every day. And depending on where people live, I do refer them. And more often I've been referring them for the appropriate, whether they have the courage to come or not. But this is amazing. The very first Asian woman to become the Lord Mayor of Manchester. Now, that is an achievement. Yeah. When she spoke to us last day, a lot of people's lives changed. You yeah. Change your perspective. Yeah. If she can say this, if she can do it, and this is what she was saying, look at me, I did it, so can you. Yeah. So I went home that day and told my husband, so can I. Yeah. So can I. So can I. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say to us today. Lord, honorary Lord, that's the name. Good evening, sisters. Brothers as well, sorry. I just was going to stick to sisters there. Good evening, sisters and brothers. It's an absolute honour to be here. And when Leah sent me the invitation, I thought, well, that's in my diary. I'm counting everything. I'm going to definitely be at the event. And after last time, you, know, you Dr. Catherine, you spoke about the event last time. Honestly, I left that event empowered. I met so many amazing sisters that day. And it just gave me so much hope. You know, in your heart, when you meet sisters that do so much to make a difference to their communities, it just absolutely, I was on a high too. So it wasn't just you. So, so as the honorary, so I'm sorry to hear that the Lord Mayor isn't here today, but as the honorary Lord Mayor, I am so happy to be here. And I welcome you all. So it's an immense honour to stand before you today as we celebrate a milestone that fills us all with pride and gratitude. Today marks 10 years since Angels of Hope set up their service. And this event is not just a celebration of their growth, but it's a testament to the strength, resilience, unity of you all in our community. Angels of Hope is more than just an organization. It is a lifeline for women and girls who have experienced unthinkable situations. And their mission is to empower them to become independent and self-reliant, giving them the tools to rebuild their lives with dignity and confidence. Their support network is crucial as it allows women to realize they are not alone and that we are together. We can overcome any challenge. Anything that comes our way, we can. You've got to believe that. And you might not be able to do it on your own, but there is a sister or a brother out there that will help you and guide you and advise you. Don't ever, ever think that I can't do this. I've got no one. You have. We're all part of one family. Yeah, you have to remember that. Really important. So, their success would not be possible without the collaboration and partnership of various community organisations. Working hand in hand with local partners, they've not only grown as a vein led organisation, and I, and I don't really like using that term, I usually like to say black, Asian, minority, ethnic. When I take it into three, four letters, I think we just try to narrow it down with more than that. Black, Asian, minority, ethnic communities, it's really powerful and we should start using the full 
terminology. We're not just they. Yeah? So let's start thinking. Let, let us change the narrative. It might take a couple of seconds longer, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why should we narrow ourselves to that? So, Angels of Hope has led the way in regards to community cohesion, enabling a sense of belonging to us all. Regardless of our background, our ethnicity and faith, it is paramount for us to feel safe and secure in our neighbourhoods. Please remember, the beauty is in our diversity. And I always say this, that we belong to one race, the human race. Yeah? So important. The beauty is in our diversity, and I see that tonight. And it's absolutely fantastic that Dia and your organization, that you can bring so many of us together from so many different communities, is so beautiful and so important and so valuable. It's not everybody that can do that. So well done to you. Around you today, there are many of us here with superpowers. Okay, let's say positions of power. <laughs> No, superpowers. <laughs> and we are ready to empower women, especially the next generations of women and girls. Let's push for gender equality and create an inclusive, open and prosperous society where women are key players. Key players to economic growth and social transformation. It is important that we know that we have the ability and skills to determine our own choices and the right to influence social change to transform our communities at a local, national and international level. That's the power that we have. Find it, believe in it, take control. And as we look back on the last 10 years of Angels for Hope, let us also look forward, look forward to the future the future that has hope and determination. There's still a lot of work to be done and many, many more lives need to be touched. So together we will continue to make a difference, empowering women, building stronger and more inclusive communities for all. And it's, it's really important that we all play our part. Don't just leave it to Leah and her team or her volunteers or the executive. We each have a role to play. Don't ever undermine yourselves. We're quick to call ourselves and knock ourselves down. We're our worst enemy sometimes. Each and every one of us is a VIP. Right, what does VIP stand for? Louder. Very important person. Absolutely, we are all very important people. And each and one, not one of us needs to recognize that. So you have a role to play and you're going to pull up the next person alongside you. You're going to raise them up. Don't be the ones to knock people down. Don't be the ones to criticize. There's enough people in this world to do that. We're the ones that need to put a smile on each other's faces. We're the ones that need to lift each other up. Because when you see this world and you see the horror and the terror of what's going on, and I will say the politicians in our world, now I'm not bound by... <laughs> I'm not bound by chains anymore. Um, so there's certain things I'm allowed to say and I'm certain things I'm not allowed to say. But you are the politicians, the community, the people, yeah? You need to lobby your politicians, your councillors, your MPs. If you want change, if you want to stand up for humanity and you see the horrors of what's happening in our world, these... Uh, I was going to get abusive then, I better not, I just, but <laughs> it's terrifying, it's emotional, and each one of us has seen those images on the TV, and each one of us, our hearts are broken, and we can't sleep at night once you've seen those images of children blown to pieces, or people wanting power and control over the less advantaged people in this world. We need to be those that are the voice of the oppressed. So please use your freedom, use your voice to be the freedom of the oppressed in our world. Thank you for listening and God bless you all.
here with you all this evening celebrating this absolutely incredible achievement. And before I go, I know there's going to be more of this later on, but I just feel that whilst I have the mic, I'd love to invite you all to give once again a massive round of applause to Angel Hope in recognition of all that you have achieved over the last 10 years. Yes, I'm going to have to learn how to do that, Catherine. So, have any of us ever had a favorite story? A story that we have heard and we have read over and over again and every time we read that story, it inspires us. We get connected to the story because we see the hero's journey from facing incredible odds to overcoming those challenges, those stories that compel us and inspire us to do great feats ourselves. I remember when I was around about nine years old and my dad came to me and he picked up a book and he handed the book to me and he said, I'd like you to read this book. This is a book about a person who has been remarkable. The woman was Mary Seacole. And Mary Seacole, he described as a woman of West Indian descent. She hailed from Jamaica, as my parents did. And he said as he was handing me the book, read her story. Look at her life. Take on all that you can about her achievements and what she did. You will be inspired to do the impossible. And I took the book and I read the book. And my whole prison, the aperture through which I looked at the world was completely transformed because I heard the story of a woman who had traveled and traversed across the ocean from the West Indies over to the Crimean War in the 19th century, a black woman, in the time where there was the height of racism. And she found her way over to what is now known as Ukraine. And she went there with the nursing skills that she had that she acquired because she had watched her mom nursing people in the West Indies. And she was inspired by what she had seen of her mom and she went across the waves and she set up a hospital because she had seen the need. She had answered the call. She had saved lives. And I saw that it was possible when we believed that there was something that we wanted to do to make a difference in the world that we could. And then I was struck as I entered into adulthood because as Catherine has said, I'm a lifelong learner and I recently came, another, came across another story. If anybody wants to share what they have taken so far from the event, what lessons have you learned? Shall we start here? <laughs> no. What one thing are you taking away with you? Uh, it's well um, it's quite good. Okay, she's going to take away your well-being. Um, what are you? What thing are you going to take away from today? Bring community together. Bringing community together. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. One thing that you're going to take home so far? That I could be the bread someone is taking. Yeah, yeah really important. And, and it's painful not to breathe. So some people are struggling to breathe and yet you can help them. What one thing are you going to take today? Um, being lifeline or standing in the dark. Excellent. You know the lifeline the person that they are hanging on. And a lot of people need that. A lot of people need that. Um, is it reading if I ask my husband? <laughs> what one thing are you going to take away today? 
I think she's already said that it's standing in the gap, seeing the need, and meeting that need. So that's very important. Excellent. Thank you. And you, sir, what one thing are you going to take from today? <laughs> 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 I love that as a verb. <laughs> what one thing are you going to take? Angels of hope is there for every woman. I love that. Angels of hope is there for every woman. Nobody is discriminated against. You can come. They do have fun, you know. We do have fun at Angels of Hope. Hangouts, they call them. What one thing are you taking? I come. I come. Yeah, very good. I come. And if it's one thing that you can, what would it be? Change the world. Change the world. Ambitious target, but never impossible. One thing? Um, we would like uh, for someone to run, so she never give up. So we had a lifetime, we shouldn't give up. Because if we give up, they give up. Yeah? So we have to keep going. One thing? Uh, I'm going to read something. About being a hero, it's about making heroes out of others, and that's what Maria is doing to all the women. Well, clap them! I know all the answers are beautiful, but she highlighted something that Lida is not just being a leader, but she's bringing leaders out of others. Thank you for sharing. Shall we come here? One thing. I'd say friendship, making good friends. The first time that I came to an Angel of Hope event, I knew no one, but I honestly left feeling like I'd made the best friends ever. Everyone's so friendly, really, really welcoming. So massive congratulations to Angel of Hope in 10 years. Excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing your experience. Amazing experience. And here, one thing you're taking away today, I can make it happen. Can what? Make it happen. She can make it happen for others. Yeah? Excellent. Thank you. One thing. Just be kind. Really kind. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Be kind. As simple as that, but really powerful. Be kind. Sometimes the world can be so unkind, especially like on social media sometimes when you look at some of the comments. Be kind. Thank you for reminding us. One thing. Oh, sorry to mention about it. Um, it is always there for everyone, every woman. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Angels thing. of hope. <laughs> no, sorry. Angels of hope is a giving. Yeah. So angels of hope are giving. Excellent. One thing that you're taking away today, so far? Be there for others. Be there for others. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's hear everyone together as well. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. yeah. Bringing everyone together, people meet each other for the first time, and that's the life changing for them as well. One thing. Um, I think one thing that stood out for me is uh, taking notice uh, and well being. So that's, that's one thing I'm taking. Yeah. Thank you. One thing. It's been mentioned before, so I'm struggling. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll be there to support the next person. Is, you know, I'll be support of you. Okay. Excellent. So we've seen a lot of people who are going to support others. Really, really grateful. One thing. I think um, all I can say is that as boys, we are missing out. We need an angel. So. <laughs> okay. Did you hear that? I totally agree. You are missing out, man. I mean, actually, this started from your husband. So, um, no pressure. Angels of hope for men. <laughs> and you can call it a 
angel Gabriel comes. <laughs> my, no, mine is the harsh one. <laughs> one thing you're going to take away today? Oh, thank you. Thank you. She's happy about the support. One thing, I'm very happy the way um, Angel of um, Light, uh, Angels of Hope, do help uh, women, empower them in many ways, and uh, give them freedom to know their, their status. So I'm so happy. May God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Freedom. We heard that word. Freedom. Angels of hope facilitate freedom. Sometimes, like Sharon said, um, when you're going through challenges and you can't get away, but when there's a lifeline, you gather the courage to get away and get free. And that's just amazing. Alo <laughs> Focus it hakun, haat rakhun, projon mirahate.